Welcome to The Weaver Sews. I'm Daryl Lancaster. I'm always looking for ways to combine the 12 downloadable patterns that I offer in my eShop. I look at fashion magazines and garments in shop windows and I think, gee, if I used this part of this pattern and combined it with that part of that pattern, I bet I could make that particular look. Since I mostly work with handwoven cloth, I tend to make outerwear, lots of gorgeous handwoven vests and jackets and coats, but I'm always on the lookout for ways to get handwoven looks to wear in the hotter months because, well, summers in New Jersey can be beastly. I decided to create a sleeveless summer top with this handwoven fabric. I've already created a video explaining how to achieve this summer top with sleeves. I basically took the main body from the 1000 swing dress. I already covered how to shorten that pattern into a top and what to do with the front waist starts. And that link will of course be below. For this top, I used the armhole and sleeve from my 200 jacket. For my sleeveless summer top, I went back to the original armhole for the 1000 swing dress. Since I ultimately want to create a button placket, I just need to identify the center front line. I just traced the center front line on grain, removing the front swing. I will eventually eliminate the center back seam and create a fold line down the center back since the shirt will now open in the front. The swing dress has a scoop neck, but I wanted a sleeveless summer shirt with a collar and a button front. My 700 and 1700 tunic patterns have a front placket and a collar, like the one I'm wearing. The difference between the two patterns has to do with the shape of the sleeve. So both patterns have the same neck and collar. I lined up the center front line of my sleeveless shirt pattern with the center front of my 700 tunic pattern. The tunic center front is a fold. So make sure you line up the center front of the shirt pattern with the center front fold line of the tunic. Don't confuse the placket marking as the center front. I've been tracing the green color. So now I will line up the shoulders, the shoulder of the shirt pattern with the green line for the shoulder of the tunic. Now I'm able to trace the neckline of the tunic onto my shirt pattern. The collar pattern from the tunic will now fit the new neckline. And of course, I repeated all of that for the back using the yoke pattern from the tunic to trace the neckline. Keeping in mind that the summer shirt back is now cut on the fold as we eliminated the seam allowance. Check to see that the shoulder seams match. Line up the shoulders of the newly drafted shirt front and back, starting at the neckline, and make the adjustments at the armhole. Remember, we always line up the seam, not the cut edges. By overlapping the shoulder seam lines, I can create an armhole facing that matches the armhole shape. Remember, in an armhole facing, the front part of the armhole facing is parallel to the grain line of the front bodice. I covered drafting facings in a previous video. Hello, Mulder. I'm Thank you for sharing. Taking a bath. <laughs> okay, just ignore the cat. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're 
to go right off the table. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Welcome back. And we're back. The inseam buttonhole placket is an option in the tunic directions. I've used it in this commercial ecot fabric made from my tunic pattern and in the swing coat that's on the dress form behind me. If you look carefully, you'll see that the buttonholes are actually in a seam. There is a vertical seam that runs down the center front and little openings are created for the buttonholes. There are five pages of step-by-step -step instructions for how to create the inseam button placket included in the assembly directions for my 700 and 1700 tunic patterns. They are free to download from my website and that link is below. I will be showing how to create the inseam buttonhole placket in a future video. But for now, to complete the pattern, I'll need to add a center front extension. Add a three inch or 7.6 centimeter extension of pattern tracing medium to that center front line. It really helps when you have a three inch ruler. Once you cut out the left and right halves of the front, you will have an additional three inches or 7.6 centimeters on both halves of the front. One more minor detail. I wanted a vent at the lower side seam. So I created a stop mark about four inches or 10 centimeters up from the hemline to indicate where to stop stitching the side seam. The hemline is about an inch and a half up from the bottom and four inches or 10 centimeters from that is where I'll put my dot. Don't forget to do it to the back. This is also for construction purposes when I actually create the button placket, which requires the hem to be in place, but it's easier to create that placket with the fronts flat in other words, not attached to the back. Now I have a completed pattern to create my sleeveless summer shirt with a collar and inseam button placket. Next time I'll show you how to construct that inseam button placket. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.